Welcome back to Fair Play. I'm Stephen Cardinal. In this video, I'm going to break down and describe the left side of the FAIR model, loss event frequency. When we perform a FAIR risk analysis, we first determine how often we expect a certain loss event to occur, then we analyze how much each of those losses will cost. If we don't have a loss event, there's no cost involved, naturally. So what's involved in determining loss event frequency? Well, loss events are basically threat events that succeed in causing harm that leads to loss. A cyber attack that fails is a threat event, but not a loss event. So loss event frequency is based on the number of threat events that occur and the percentage of those that succeed. We measure the percentage of success as vulnerability. For example, an attacker performs a credential stuffing attack against a web application, trying various combinations of usernames and passwords, hoping to break in. Each attempted username and password combo, admin user and password one, is a threat event. Most of these attempts hopefully will fail. The percentage that succeed is a measure of our vulnerability to credential stuffing attacks. If we're 10% vulnerable to these attacks, we can multiply the number of threat events expected by the percentage to determine how many loss events will occur over a period of time. As I mentioned earlier, we almost always measure these on an annual basis. But what if we don't know the threat event frequency or the vulnerability of our asset? We can go a step down in the model to perform more fine-grained estimates. Before we do, it's important to note that it's rare you need to go that far down the model. Work at as high a level as possible in the model to come up with an accurate forecast that has sufficient precision to make decisions. Working deeper in the model is good to identify any hidden assumptions, but actually doing calculations down at those levels is rarely worthwhile. Breaking down threat event frequency, we have two items contact frequency and probability of action. The contact frequency is how often our threat comes into contact with our asset. If we're analyzing an insider threat, the employee may come into contact with the asset tens if not hundreds of times every day. Just because they have contact doesn't mean they'll try and do something harmful. Most of your employees never try to cause harm. And so we also consider the probability of action. When they're in contact with the asset, how likely are they to try and do something nefarious? If we're concerned about malicious threats rather than error conditions. When thinking about probability of action, there are three things to consider. The perceived value of the asset to the threat is what they're accessing worth anything to them. The perceived asset vulnerability, how weakly protected is the asset related to the threat's capabilities. And the perceived risk, you know, how likely are they to get caught or otherwise suffer from taking action. Right? Warning notices and past sanctions may serve to drive down probability of action. All of that helps us to determine threat event frequency. We can break down vulnerability by comparing the threat capability of our threat actor and the resistance strength of the controls. This comparison can be challenging. It is for me. Fortunately, as I mentioned earlier, we don't often have to come down to this level of the model to perform an effective analysis. That said, both threat capability and resistance strength are measured against something called the threat capability continuum. It's a spectrum of attacker capabilities from the worst, technically inept, to the greatest hackers in the world. In the case of natural disasters, think of the cat rating for storms as they go from tropical storms all the way up to Cat 5 hurricanes. We estimate how good the threat agent is as a measure of their percentile. Is our attacker in the 90th percentile, meaning they make up the top tier of skilled and funded actors, attackers? Or are they more of a garden variety, basement dwelling attacker of opportunity who only can handle the low hanging fruit? Now for resistance strength, we indicate what percentile of threat we're able to resist. A highly protected asset may be designed to withstand all but the most advanced nation state actors, meaning its resistance is close to 90%. By performing Monte Carlo simulations, we compare our threat capabilities against our resistance strength to estimate how often, if ever, that threat community may be able to generate a successful attack that leads to a loss event. So we may estimate the threat community under analysis as being in the 50th to 75th percentile. If our resistance strength is estimated to be between 80 and 90%, the threat actors will never be successful. 
Now, if our resistance strength is from 65 to 85 percent, however, we see there's some overlap. So a series of simulations using Monte Carlo techniques will allow us to estimate how vulnerable we are. And that's the loss event frequency side of the FAIR model. In the next video, I'll take you through the loss magnitude side of the model, because when things go bad, how bad might they be?